Hey guys, this is going to be a very short tutorial to cover the new DPCM sample editor that was just introduced in FEMISU 2.4. So what are we talking about here? Uh, DPCM samples are very low quality samples that were supported on the NES slash Famicom. So now FEMISU supports generating them from WAV file, not only DMC file. So now where it all happens, it changed a little bit. It's in the DPCM samples section of the project explorer. You can click on this little folder icon to load a sample. Here we're going to be loading a WAV file and a DMC file. One thing we might want to do is maybe look at the sample. You can click on the little waveform icon here. Here we can see the waveform. Uh, just like anything in Family Studio, you can zoom in with the mouse wheel, press the mouse button, and just uh, pan like this. So what are we looking at here? It's uh, in gray. You always see what I call the source data. In this case, it's a WAV file. So as you can see, it's this very kind of smooth sine wave. And in color, which is always going to be the color that you assign here in the project explorer is what i call the process data it's the output of the processing is what's going to be played on the nes or at the very least the emulation of the nes that we do inside fami studio so if we zoom out we can press the little play button to hear the process sample and if we right click we can listen to the source sample so as you can hear the wave file sounds a lot smoother uh, than the process uh, file but that's the nature of the, the, the type of sample we're dealing here with. So we can also preview at different sample rates. These sample rates are the same that we're going to see later when we assign uh, the samples to keys of the piano. And if we look at the, the DMC file, it's a snare. So in this case here, both the process and source uh, sample sounds exactly the same because it's a DMC file. There is not much processing going on. And also, we don't see in gray the source data. The only reason is because it's hiding behind the green uh, waveform uh, because uh, the process data is exactly identical to the source data here. So the whole workflow in Family Studio is what I would describe as lossless in the sense that any kind of change you do, uh, either adjusting the volume, that kind of stuff, is never going to affect the source data. The source data is going to remain embedded in your Family Studio project. Uh, when you save it. So if you send a Family Studio file to a friend, that friend is going to be able to see the, the wave source data and tweak it to his or her liking. So that's a, that's a good thing. That's why I describe it as lossless. Literally, the only operation you can do to destroy some of the source data is if you go ahead and select samples and press delete. That's literally the only destructive operation you can do. So what, we can, what else can we do? We can adjust the volume. We can also expand this little uh, panel here, which is the, the effects panel typically, and adjust the, the volume using a four point volume envelope, which is, uh, allows more local volume adjustment. So if we hear the result here, here we just created some kind of attack and made the sample a lot shorter. This is extremely powerful when you combine this with the uh, trim zero volume option here. So when I enable this, you're gonna see that it completely truncates the last part of the sample. So this is also a great way to kind of adjust the length of your sample in a non-destructive way. Uh, I'm not going to cover every other option that's here. For example, the padding mode is quite technical. Uh, you can read the documentation. It's, it's to address some kind of hardware uh, quirks on the NES. Uh, PAL processing is going to use the set of frequencies that are uh, typical to PAL, so Europe ter territory. Uh, reverse bit is only available when using DMC file and it's going to be useful to correct some mistakes that happen in some of the NES game that we're aware of that had the bit in the wrong order. So let's say now we're happy with our samples. We, we, we really like that sound. So what, we, what can we do? So we can use this in our song by assigning the samples to keys of the piano. And in Family Studio, the only instrument that can play DPCM sample is the DPCM instrument, which is here in gray and it's always present. And if we click on this little uh, waveform icon here, we're going to see kind of a piano. And the range that is lighter is uh, the range that we are allowed to assign samples to. So there's a couple of ways we can assign samples. You can click in the background and it's going to ask you to pick a sample. Here we're going to pick our A220. Uh, second way to assign sample is just to grab a sample and just drop it. Uh, we can also double click on a sample to just select another pitch. So here let's pitch, take this pitch. Here I can play this. And now the same sample used at uh, two different pitches create an A and an E. So this is how with a handful of sample, you can cover the entire keyboard or at least a good portion of it. 
What else can we do with our samples? Well, we could save them uh, to use in another program. For example, uh, if I want to use the sample in Family Tracker, I can click the uh, save icon, the little floppy icon, give it a name, etc. If somehow you lost your source data, that WAV file that we've imported and you, you want to export it from Family Studio, you can right click on this uh, little uh, floppy disk. And here it's going to ask me to save the WAV file. Another thing that's worth mentioning is that because we're kind of loading all these WAV files in the Famicu project, your Famicu project might get a little bit bigger if you load a, a huge quantity of samples. So here, let's, I'm just going to save the project here. And if we look at the file size here, it's 17 kilobytes, which arguably is not very huge, but you, we can easily reach hundreds of kilobytes if we load a lot of samples. Uh, Let's say you're you're you want to reduce your file size. You say you're done with that source data, and you just uh, you just want to get rid of it. So one way to do this is to go in the uh, the cleanup dialog here, and go in the project cleanup. And we're not going to use those, but we're going to use the permanently apply all DPCM samples processing, and we're going to click OK. Now, if we go back to our sample. We're going to see that we no longer have this, have this kind of gray source data, that, that beautiful waveform that we had before. Now all we have is kind of the, the process data. And if I adjust the volume, you're going to see that the, basically the source data has become what used to be the process data. And if I save my file again, now instead of being 17 kilobyte, it's 2 kilobytes. So this is only something I would recommend doing at the very end when you're done tweaking all your sample. You can do a little cleanup. Uh, but otherwise, uh, doing that will severely uh, limit your ability to kind of go back and tweak stuff in a, in a lossless way. So that's about all I had to say about the DPCM sample editor. Let me know if you have any questions, comments in the, in the, in the YouTube comments. Thank you very much.